We're in central London today with the Nikon ZF. The ZF is a full frame version of the ZF-C. The thing I really like about this camera straight off the bat is that it's got that nostalgic look and feel of a Nikon analog camera. It feels like a film camera and supposedly shoots like one. Alongside that, it's full frame, which is a really nice change for this series of camera. And of course, because it's a ZF, it also accepts all of the Z series lenses, which gives you that flexibility, that sharpness, and that quality that we come to expect from their range. With 24.5 megapixels, it's not the highest resolution camera that you can get, but it's not bad for the price point of two and a half grand. It also uses Nikon's X-Speed 7 image processing engine, which means that it's probably got a really similar quality to the rest of their Z series cameras. Now, of course, we're gonna go and test it out and tell you a little bit more about it along the way, but I am really excited to try it out today. We've got the 40 millimeter prime, which is almost exactly what you'd expect when you're shooting an analog with a 35 or a 50. We've kind of split the difference. So let's go and see what it can do. Outside of being able to shoot incredible street photographs, the Nikon ZF is also capable of great burst modes. So it can shoot eight frames per second in RAW and JPEG combined. If you have the extended version, it shoots 14 frames per second. And if you're only shooting in JPEG, you can do 30 frames per second. So it's right up there with some of the better cameras from the Nikon range and some of the other leading brands. Now let's talk about AF. So as you would come to expect from leading brands, the AF is fantastic. There's lots of modes, bird, car. It's got 299 AF points and 95% coverage. So again, I would say that's pretty high up there with all of the other cameras that we've talked about recently. Currently, I'm finding it really easy to shoot with. It's quite intuitive. So on top here, you've got lots of dials and modes. Everything's in the same place you'd expect it to be from a camera similar to this in the Nikon range. Um, it's quite compact and lightweight. The only complaint I've had so far is that there isn't much of a grip, which means it's slightly more tricky to hold if you have a smaller lens on like this. It's not as comfortable in the hand, but then I do really love the articulating screen. talk about video specs. Whilst this camera is definitely primarily for people who shoot stills, there are also some great video specs in there if you're a hybrid shooter or maybe you're just looking to capture some content. So first of all, let's talk about the screen, which is articulating, so a lot of filmmakers will really like that. It shoots in 4K, which is oversampled from 6K when you're shooting in 30 frames per second. If you want to shoot in 60 frames per second, it still shoots 4K, but it is APS-C, so bear in mind there is that crop. It also shoots in 60 frames per second at 4K, and if you want to go to 120 frames per second, you can shoot in full HD. In terms of bit rate, it is 422 10-bit, as you would expect. You can also shoot in 8-bit. Um, that will give you that real color depth, so it is worth picking this up if you're a hybrid shooter or maybe you want to make some content alongside your stills. One really good thing about this camera is that it can shoot 125 minutes with one battery without seam cutting, which is also great for those of you who may be shooting something like an event. Nikon ZF also has up to five stops of sensor shift and eight stops of image stabilization. So it's really good if you're on the move or you're maybe shooting a little bit of handheld content. In terms of ISO, it can go up to 64,000. Now, obviously we wouldn't recommend that and hopefully it will get a little bit darker so we can show that off for you today, but it does mean that you can push it slightly further. Now, in terms of usability, at the moment, I would say I'm finding it really easy, especially with a 40 mil to get some really beautiful shots. It's very analog friendly. It feels very much like a film camera and it shoots quite quickly too. I would say the only real issue I'm having is that I have a prime lens on and I'm not really used to using a prime on shoots in Oxford Circus. That being said, it's kind of the perfect lens. So this pad with the 40 millimeter is getting some really, really nice aesthetics. The images we're showing you on the screen now are unedited. So hopefully you can take a look at those and see what you think. As I mentioned earlier, it's 710 grams. So it's incredibly light and I'm definitely feeling that in my hand, but I am also feeling a challenge with the grip. It is really difficult to grip onto, especially if you're shooting street photography from sort of hip height or you're shooting maybe with the screen out looking up. 
That being said, I am still really enjoying it. So on top here, you have the ability to shoot flash, which is really great if you're shooting like someone uh, similar to Martin Powell, or you want a more artistic style, or maybe you're just shooting at nighttime. I would say overall, I'm finding it really, really easy to use. I really like the quality of the images coming out. And I think so far it's proven to be a really great little camera. So we've been out in central London today with the Nikon ZF. I wasn't expecting too much from this because they have their high end range like the Z7 and the Z8, um, but actually it's really impressed me. I really love the analog feel and the aesthetic that the camera puts out. It's a really beautiful color science. A lot of the images we've been showing you today haven't been edited, so hopefully you can make that decision for yourself. But I also think that they would be easy to edit in terms of color profile. With regards to the way it shoots, I think it's really easy to use. On top here, you've got your separate dials, so you can set it to manual, aperture priority, shutter speed, etc. You've then got your ISO, and then you've got your uh, shutter speed, and you've got your uh, light capabilities and adjustments here. Now, at the bottom here, you've got your battery and your memory card slot. The only thing I would say about this is that you can have a micro SD or an SD card, but you can't have two SD cards. So that might put a few people off if you're shooting something like a wedding and you wanted to double shoot. In terms of video capabilities, it's decent enough that you can shoot content. It's got some really good specs if you're shooting something for your channel, hybrid, weddings, maybe even events. But I would say it's the stills capability that's impressed us the most. Um, everything is where you'd expect it to be on a Nikon. It's actually really user-friendly and it's very light. It also balances really well with the lenses, so you're not going to have that problem where it sort of tilts forward every time you're using a different lens. You can charge it through the camera, which is a great capability and is kind of the standard now in most cameras that come out, so that's good. And you've got a HDMI port, albeit a mini one, which makes a lot of sense when you consider how light the camera is. I've really enjoyed using this camera today. It's been a great body to get my hands on. And actually, I've really liked the aesthetic of it. It's very similar to an analog camera. It shoots very much like film cameras shoot. This camera is great if you're trying to move from film to digital, um, especially if you're somebody that doesn't really want to give up a lot of the quality and features that analog has. Um, and the price point is not too bad. It is more on the expensive side, especially if you then have to factor in buying Z lenses, but otherwise I think it's a great price. Thank you for watching. I've been Tiffany and we will see you in the next video.